it's not broken. The insanity zone. With these kinds of temperatures, everything becomes dangerous. What's up guys, this is Chad with Living the Van Life up here in the Pacific Northwest of Washington State. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for some winter content. I came up here to the Pacific Northwest after Baja to get into some winter camping and by the time I got back up here, winter in the Pacific Northwest had pretty much all but disappeared. The month of January was quite warm. It was extremely dry with almost no precipitation. And I got tired of waiting for the kind of epic winter adventure that I wanted to sink my teeth into. So at that point, I decided to point my heading north and start looking at what lies up in the Arctic. Driving up to the Arctic was always on my bucket list. So I figured, you know what? There is no time like the present. The journey starts now. Now my plan is to drive all the way up to a little village called Tuktiuk Tuk. Now the trek from Northwest Washington all the way through British Columbia across the Yukon into Northwest Territory and onto Tuktiuk Tuk is about 2,600 miles. And to put that into perspective, that's like driving from Los Angeles to New York City. It's gonna be a lot of driving and as I've been researching the temperatures, the further north we get, the colder it will get. Once you get into the Arctic and cross the Arctic Circle, temperatures start dropping well below zero. Temperatures of negative 30, negative 35 degrees Fahrenheit. We are getting into some winter camping right now. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to this adventure to the Arctic. <laughs> into this trek been driving for eight hours 37 minutes it feels like it's just never ending of course that's a very very small dent in the total of 2,600 miles all the way up to Tuktiuktuk when you spend enough time looking at things on a map you develop a perception that maybe it's not too far away but I tell you what you start putting in the hours you start laying down the miles 
then the reality sets in that this is gonna be one hell of an adventure. I think the thing that intrigues me the most of this 2600 mile journey to the north is just how vastly the landscape will change. The vegetation will change, the weather, the temperature. Right now it's 37 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about three to four degrees Celsius. There is snow now starting to come down. My goal for tonight is to make it to Prince George, which I would say is about a third of the way up British Columbia where I will stop, get some rest, and continue on tomorrow. Well, here we are up here in Prince George, British Columbia. We are now 476 miles into this adventure since we left Bellingham, Washington. Prince George is actually a fairly decent sized city up here in the interior of British Columbia. Uh, matter of fact, for the evening, I am hunkered down here at a Walmart parking lot. So a little bit of urban stealth camping here this evening in the Sprinter van. Figured I'd uh, give you guys a little bit of a walkthrough of how I've got it set up to make it even possible to successfully urban stealth camp. As we can see here, I've got the Sprinter van parked out at the back of a parking lot off to the outer edge. We've got another fellow van lifer that has uh, decided to hunker down here in the Walmart parking lot as well. As we can see standing outside the van here, there is no evidence of any sort of lights on inside the van. And here in just a second, I'm gonna take you inside and actually show you how much light is truly on inside. Now that's made possible by the window tent that's installed here and I've got the extra dark limo tent that uh, assists with that. I was gonna take you guys inside here and show you what's going on inside, but Let's do a little temperature check here as we make our way north. Looks like we're sitting at about 28 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about negative three degrees Celsius. So while it's getting chilly outside there, the diesel heater is cranking away. Let's go inside and see how nice and warm it is in here. We've got plenty of light going on inside here. In fact, I've been chilling out here watching some Baraka on the iPad, hanging out while the DC heater cranks away down below here. Now up here at the front, we can see the partition curtain that is spread across. So not only is this curtain actually uh, blackout, but it is also insulated. There's a uh, closed cell foam inside there that insulates that which is great because it keeps all the heat from the diesel heater back here in the living space instead of escaping out through the windows as we start approaching zero degrees fahrenheit as we go further north i'll be able to put those window coverings up also will provide more stealth but also more heat protection to keep the heat here inside the cab we've got 476 miles under our belt on this adventure so far and that leaves uh, just about 2,200 miles yet to go till we get up to Tuk 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 in the Northwest Territories. People ask, well, why are you doing it in the wintertime? You're crazy. I feel like anybody could do it in the summertime. I wanted to challenge myself even further and try it in the winter. I'm looking forward to getting myself as well as the Sprinter van down into some extremely low temperatures. I spent 38 weeks of building this thing to be capable of just about anything I could think of throwing at it. Definitely wanted to make sure that it was good for cold weather situations, so this is going to be the test. That's it for day one. I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night here, hunker down and get some sleep, and we'll catch you guys in the morning. degrees Fahrenheit and negative 10 degrees Celsius. This is only the beginning for cold temperatures as we head north. So here we go, day number two. We're headed from Prince George, British Columbia to Kitwanga, and that is the start of the Cassiar Highway, which runs up the interior of British Columbia north all the way to Yukon Territory. 
If you guys haven't done so yet, head on over to livingthevanlife.com. Get yourself your own Live in the Van Life hoodie and keep warm with me on this trip north to the Arctic. Let's hit the road. Vanderhoof, Canada, the geological center of British Columbia. And what that means is that finally making some progress on my trip north. Yesterday as I watched the map and watched my location barely creep up, I felt like I was making hardly any progress. Now halfway through BC, that feels good. miles into the journey yesterday was kind of a long mundane drive with the overcast and the occasional snow but now getting out closer to the Cassiar Highway starting to see the mountains and this reality is starting to set in that this adventure is actually happening having the Sun out definitely brings on a new sense of hope in this situation that it's not just going to be overcast and gray the entire time. I just stopped here at this Petro Canada fuel station. I topped off the Sprinter van with diesel. This right here is the start of the Stuart Cassiar Highway. It runs about 500 miles north to basically the border of British Columbia and Yukon Territory to the Alaskan Highway. My understanding is that the major portion of this highway is actually unpaved and it is gravel and it is the middle of winter time. I have a feeling that this is where the adventure is truly going to start. So I just made it the 150 miles up the first bit of the Cassiar Highway and I am at Meziadden Junction. And basically what I have found here is that it's kind of what appears to be like a logging camp. They do have it set up like a hotel so if I so wish I could get a room here. They're basically just set up with uh, permanent uh, buildings inside shipping containers and uh, job office trailers. So it's kind of interesting, but I think that's uh, how life rolls uh, the further that we get north up here. But uh, nonetheless, the staff has been friendly here. There is a gas station, so I'll fill up before I leave here in the morning. And there is a, uh, a cafeteria here that serves food, and they say the food uh, is actually pretty decent. In fact, they said tonight is spaghetti and rib night. So I think I might go enjoy myself a nice warm meal before I hunker down in the van for the evening.
uh, Venmo or something? Yeah. Wait. Uh, my, uh, what would you call him? My uncle, uncle, step uncle or whatever. He ended up, they had to pull the plug on him too. That guy was doing a bad batch of coke and it's a Venmo. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
got myself into, so we'll get through it, come out the other side, hopefully safe and successful. Well, this is known as Bell 2 Lodge, and there is a fuel stop here, so I went ahead and just stopped and topped off the fuel. It only took about 14 liters, which is not much. It was only 50 miles or so since the last fill up, but being out here in the winter time, not knowing what is open seasonally up here, uh, I just taking the extra precaution and going ahead and topping off fuel every chance that I get. Uh, it sounds like the next fuel stop is about 150 miles north of here at Deese Lake. So that's not too far, I feel confident in that. But there again, because my only source of heat is from the diesel heater, I don't ever want to catch myself in a situation where perhaps I'm stuck or broke down and the van is low on fuel and I run out of heat. So. That's why I keep up on that. Uh, it looks like a very interesting lodge here in the winter time. It appears that they offer ski tours as well as heli skiing, which is pretty cool. But uh, we're definitely getting up into some deep snow and uh, this lodge looks really cool covered in snow. insane this just looks like wet dirt road but watch when I touch the brakes I am locked up right there that is an absolute slick sheet of ice right there but the good thing is the Sprinter van is actually handling it very very well even with the brakes locked up on this thing the anti-lock brakes uh, work amazingly and just keeping this thing in a straight line and still able to handle it the traction control works great. Uh, I'm actually in two wheel drive right now and not even needing uh, four wheel drive. We have traveled 184 miles since we left the junction this morning. The terrain has been very, very cool. The weather has been off and on, cloudy, foggy, a little bit sunny. But now the clouds have set in, precipitation has set in, and it's now snowing. I'd say it's probably considered a light snow at this point. The vegetation has changed tremendously. Kind of reminds me of a Dr. Seuss illustration of some sorts. <laughs> the roads are now fully covered in snow, which I prefer over just the sheets of ice. 
still rolling in two-wheel drive. Well, I just pulled into Dees Lake. This little town, this little community just literally popped up out of nowhere. This is known as the most important fuel stop on the route. The direction that I'm heading, it is uh, 150 miles to the north. I've got 188 miles of fuel left. This loader here that is uh, removing snow in the parking lot just dug up the only telephone line. This is the only store, this is the only gas station right here. Their telephones are now out. And that telephone line is responsible for credit card. Well, let's just put it this way. Telephone repair guys aren't uh, readily available. And it could be uh, five to six days before phone lines are ready. So it's cash only. I think what I'm going to do is scrounge through the van and see what uh, little bit of cash that I actually have with me. And maybe it'll buy me enough to uh, at least get up the road. This literally just happened as I was pulling up. Uh, other people that are fueling at the station here are having the same problem. I think one thing that actually might be saving grace is when I traveled down to Mexico, I did grab a whole bunch of cash and I actually stowed it away in various different spots in the van and I'm hoping that I can actually find where that stuff is. It was small amounts, but who knows, it might be enough. <laughs> Look at that, small handful. There's another handful back here in my backpack. I also stored some in here. And I still got that there as well. So I like to see that, that's a five. So between that and what I've got here in my wallet, 10, five, 15, there's 30, 11, 12, 13, 19, 20. Ha! $75 in cash. Thanks to Mexico, actually had me prepared $75. And this is gonna save my ass and get me the heck out of here. Okay, well that was a close one. Topping off with fuel, continuing on from Dees Lake. Got 150 miles to get to the Alaskan Highway. hitting about the uh, 1,215 mile mark since leaving Northwest Washington. That means it's uh, approaching just about the halfway mark to the Arctic Ocean and Tuktiuktuk. -tuk. Got about 35 more miles to go before I hit the Alaska Highway. Pretty much all the way at the very most northern point of British Columbia which all in itself feels like quite the accomplishment for sure.
1,200 miles since I left Northwest Washington. That right there is a sign that welcomes me to Yukon. Reaching the Yukon, it feels damn good. It's been a hell of a push. It's been a lot of driving, especially to do it in three days, but it's been a hell of an adventure. So here we are. From here, it's just a couple miles, if that, uh, to the Alaska Highway. Then I got to backtrack to Watson Lake, which is where I'll stay the night and fuel up there. Home sweet home for the night here in Watson Lake. About six degrees Fahrenheit, which is about negative 15 degrees Celsius. So it's definitely getting cold out here. That's the coldest it's been so far on the whole trip. Cheers to accomplishing the trek across British Columbia, the Cassiar Highway, and making it all the way up here to Yukon. Unfortunately, it was so socked in most of the time, I didn't really get to see as much of the scenery of what I uh, had expected to be able to see up there, but nonetheless, it was uh, about making the journey and doing so in winter time, and uh, here we are. It ended up taking me about 10 hours and 15 minutes from leaving the uh, junction this morning to getting up here uh, into the Yukon. So, simple dinner for tonight, but looking forward to it. A little bit of mac and cheese and the old jet boil. Just a little bit of comfort food as I kick back and relax for the evening. Now I like to go ahead and cook my noodles in the jet boil here, actually in the sink, because if and when the damn thing boils over, at least it boils over into the sink and not over my cabinets. The actual lid of the jet boil has a strainer built into it. So when it comes to draining your pasta, you just do so right out of the lid itself. Okay, and so we don't just have regular old Velveeta mac and cheese. Let's go ahead and add some uh, chili garlic sauce to it just to put a twist on it. Let's go ahead and add some New Mexico green chili just for the fun of it because you know what? Why not? And at least that'll put a little bit of a twist on it. I know this isn't cooking over a campfire or anything like that, but after a long haul like that, I just need a simple meal. Damn, that looks tasty right there. <laughs> That's some plain old simple mac and cheese. Twist it up to have a bit of a bite. New Mexico green chili comes through tremendously. got the window coverings up here I've got the partition curtain up here also window covering there and here as I get into bed I will put up the rear partition 
It's an insulated covering that partitions the whole back door section off. And it's another layer of insulation. When I open the back doors to access anything in the garage down underneath, this is all partitioned off with insulated material and none of the heat escapes. None of the rain, none of the snow comes in and falls on my bed or my pillows. And uh, that'll really help keep things much, much warmer uh, as things continue to cool off as we head north. It's gonna be a test uh, to see how prepared this vehicle is, how prepared I am. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hunker down for the evening. Get a good night's sleep. We'll catch you guys in the AM. Well, survived night number one up here in the Yukon. Temperatures dropped to about uh, negative two degrees Fahrenheit, which is about negative 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, the van so far has done very very good i have the diesel heater set at uh, about three out of a 5.5 uh, so just over halfway i would say and it kept the uh, interior of the van at about 61 degrees which is uh, more than comfortable but at this point i think this goes ahead and wraps up this episode part one of the journey to the arctic ocean as we go from Northwest Washington all the way through British Columbia into the Yukon. So you guys make sure and stay tuned in for part two as I continue through the Yukon up into Northwest Territory and all the way to Tuk 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 and the Arctic Ocean. And like I said before, if you guys haven't already, go on over to the website, get yourself a hoodie, t-shirt, stickers. There's all sorts of stuff on there that you guys can get, liveinthevanlife.com. Um, and if you guys have made it this far in the video, please consider subscribing. I'd love to have you on board. Make sure and hit the like button. And most importantly, leave your feedback in the comment section down below. All right, guys. I'm going to get out of here, get the van prepped, and warming up for this trek north. We'll see you in the next episode on the way to the Arctic Ocean. Peace out. Keep on trucking.